Welcome back. So today is Wednesday, which means it's time to do another news of the week episode. And yes, I am started to do the news of the week episode back in the usual schedule of Wednesday because I know in the past couple of weeks it's been kind of all over the place or I haven't been able to do a news of the week episode because there hasn't really been a lot of news to talk about in the past week. But today, uh, it is also a day where we're going to have the semifinal of the second Second leg between the Seattle Sounders versus NYCFC. And there's actually a news in this News of the Week episode that is going to be related to that game, which I'll talk about in just a bit. But we also saw a signing today happen with FC Cincinnati, who signed defensive midfielder Albany Novoboto. I might have just completely butchered that name, so I apologize in advance. But they signed him as a designated player. Now, normally you don't see a lot of defensive midfielders sign as a DP. And in this case, I've also heard that he can play as a center back. Which, yeah, in some way you could say that FC Cincinnati might have just broke the cardinal sins. Or kind of the unwritten rule of MLS. Where if you're going to sign a DP player, do not sign a, a player that currently plays as a center back. Or worse, even, even as a goal, goalkeeper. But in the case of Cincinnati and how they have just been been the most leakiest de defense in the league for the past couple of seasons it makes sense that they decide to spend some money now apparently he is he is coming from the turkish super league and he isn't actually coming from one of the big free clubs like Besiktas, Fenerbahce, or or uh, galatasaray so it's gonna be interesting to see how he's going to do i mean i heard that he is definitely very good and that he'll fit right in in mls but you know we'll see whether or not if that is going to be the case and especially when you spend dp money on a defensive midfielder you better hope that he's going to be be worked out because so far most of the dp that fc cincinnati has signed has not been good what whatsoever now uh the vancouver whitecaps have signed david caicedo to a contract extension not a big surprise because caicedo has been one of the the better players for this whitecaps team uh, though Sporting KC have cut Jose Mari from their roster, and I'm kind of surprised that he was still part of their roster because I've heard the the fact that a couple of months ago when he had that incident where he was subbed on and again and then immediately subbed off, uh, I thought that was kind of the last straw that Sporting KC had cut him from the roster. But it turns out uh, this week was official that he is no longer in this roster and you know that pretty much also sends a message to a lot lot of the players in skc that you know if you don't perform you are not not only going to get benched but you could potentially get 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 cut from the roster and you know i mean i it, it's definitely I mean, one of those kind of awkward situations where you see a player getting sub in and immediately subbed out and most of the time i've seen seen those kind of happen and that maybe that's just a head coach kind of sending an example and i've talked about how you know that was a clear message for between peter remise and his player that if you don't perform even if you're subbed in you can easily subbed out but i didn't think that it was going to go in extreme cases where he is actually going to be cut from the roster but that of course is exactly that the the case and you could say that that maybe some sporting kc fan fans agree with this because he just have not been good enough for for the team and yeah you know he's going to be no long, longer part of this morning kc team after being cut from the roster now uh moving on in terms of the next news so i mentioned earlier there is a news related to tonight's game between the seattle sounders versus nycfc in the second leg of cco obviously the sounders have a uh an advantage heading into this game with a free one advantage after their free one win in the first leg and unfortunately for nycfc there is some more bad news as they are not going to not only, once again, not have Maxi Morales in this game, but Maxine Chino is also not going to be available. And I believe he's he's the, the, the captain of, of the team. Or it, was it Sean Johnson that is the captain? Either way, uh, it's a it's a huge loss for them to miss uh, one of their best defender and probably their, their most influenced attacker in Maxi Morales again. I mean, in the last game, I did say that, you know, in some way, I don't think NYCFC did miss Maxi Morales that much because they were still creating chances against a very, very tough sound, Sounders defense. But you can definitely sense that they de definitely want to have Maxi Morales back in this game, especially with the way that they're down 3-1 in the aggregate score. And now it seems like that is not going to be the case. So, yeah, that's a huge loss for the the for NYCFC and, you know, for the Sounders. That's maybe good news, the fact that they're going to... They're, they're not going to face a very strong NYCFC team again. But 
Remember what happened a couple of years ago when the Sounders play against Columbus in the MLS Cup and the fact that, you know, the crew was also very shorthanded and the Sounders, I think, kind of got a little bit too cocky and thought that it was going to be an easy win. I'm pretty sure Brian Schmetzer is try trying to get into his guys again that, yeah, you know, even if NYCFC is missing their some of their best player, it doesn't mean is is a guarantee. I mean, even with the, this 3-1 lead, if NYCFC can score two goals, they're moving on into the final. So the margin is is not not that that much for the the Sounders to 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 afford to do in the second leg and you know again keep in mind the away goal still counts in the CONCACAF Champions League I know a lot of you have probably watched the UEFA Champions League and and you you saw how they kind of abolish the away goal which by the way you know I have watched so, some of it and I do agree that it's a good idea that they abolish the away goals because now you can definitely see that maybe things are a little bit more even out and that there tends to be much more more intensive kind of games and just players really want want to to go for it and doesn't want to just be very conservative because of the away goal rule and it's going to be interesting to see whether or not if Concacaf is going to get rid of, rid of that too in the future. Now, uh, Joseph Martinez, he's going to be out six to eight weeks with a knee injury. Now, this is not really new news because I've kind of mentioned about Martinez. He's going to be out a, a bit for Atlanta United. Certainly bad news for Atlanta because we know what Atlanta is when they do not have have Joseph Martinez or even without a healthy Joseph Martinez. They are very toothless going forward on the attack. And, you know, in, in some way, this is also unsurprised that Joseph Martinez was, was going to be out for a couple of weeks because of a knee injury because he just didn't look like himself in the first couple of weeks. Like, you know, I thought last season when he he started look back like himself, I thought this year he was going to really go back to the Joseph Martinez that we know. And, you know, I was kind of surprised that he, he has struggled in the first couple of weeks, which kind of makes me wonder is he bothering and and is there any injury or is the, the the knee injury that he suffered is related to the torn ACL that he had a, uh, a couple of year, years ago mind you I remember they, they said that they did had some issue in terms of the reprocess uh when when Joseph Martinez was recovering from that that torn ACL but yeah it's a huge blow again for Atlanta United and it's also kind of a huge blow to, to Joseph Martinez himself where you know, now he's starting to become injury prone. And that's the last thing that Atlanta United wants to have to see their most important player and literally their main goal scorer for this team are injury prone. And that it's no surprise that their attack has really str struggled in these first couple of games. And also to nobody's su surprise, Dom Dwyer clearly is not, not the answer to this team. I mean, I, I can't believe Atlanta United just never... Ne ne never kind of learned the fact that you can't just sign some some MLS player that might be good a couple of years ago but nowadays they're kind of a little bit wash and kind, kind of no longer to be that lethal goal scorer that we've seen a couple of years ago and they did it again this off season with signing Dom Dwyer where you know if this was 2015 then that's definitely a great replacement but this is 2022 and he is nowhere near as he he was doing his, his day with Sporting KC and even doing his first se season with Orlando City. Now, uh, the Seattle Sounders is reported to be interested to sign Leon left back Oswaldo Rodriguez and insert the jokes about how the Sounders, they desperately need to sign another guy that is named Oswaldo because, you know, they definitely miss Ozzy Alonso after he left a couple of years ago. But in all serious aside, this is clearly a, a replacement repla that they, they're thinking of when they do sell new who which you know it could be in this this summer transfer window i mean especially of how new who has been playing though i will say that most likely it's not going to be this summer maybe in the winter transfer window because i know cameroon uh they did qualify for the world cup and if new who does have a great great world cup or even have a great rest of the season for the sounders you know there's going to be a lot of bidders in europe that is going to try to get get new who and you know i'm pretty sure the sounders have already seen that do dollar sign and yeah they're they're not going to be hesitant in order to sell their player even if it's going to be very t tough especially for the fan base too because new who is definitely one of the, the favorite if not the favorites in in that sounders fan base but you know it's also a good example of seeing the sounders already having a a plan to do do so i mean how many times we've seen clubs when they do sell off their biggest asset they don't have a play plan b and that they don't really have a real re replacement and just kind of take the money and it seems like you know the sounders does have have a good plan b because one thing i know, know about oswaldo rodriguez is that he has has appeared for the mexican national team before and a lot of people down the league at emic he says that he is a deep 
decent player and maybe even even much better than than new who well actually i won't go as that far because you know we've seen how new who has been been playing for the sounders for the past couple of years you know it's going to be tough for anyone to of course replace the quality that he has but if there's one guy that could potentially do it it could be oswaldo rodriguez and we'll see whether or not if this deal eventually will go go for because right now it's still in the er early stage of the fact that the sounders are only just report that their interest in terms of signing him from leon now uh one player that is in events talk with an mls team is andre Andres Kubas, who uh, it was reported that the Vancouver Whitecaps is events talk to sign the Paraguayan defense admit from French club, and I believe it's Nimes, if that's how you, you pronounce it. I might have act absolutely butchered it too, because, you know, with some of those French club, there are some French club that you do pronounce it a little bit different compared to, to it. I mean, one example of that is his niece and that i'm pretty sure it drives everybody crazy that every time when when you see see the word nice people think that it, it's called it's nice but you know in the french pronunciation it's actually actually niece so i'm gonna say that this is probably nimes or that's how you pronounce but you know if you're a french speaker and you think i completely butchered it i do apologize because i don't speak french and and i'm you know, you know my pronunciation with with some of these for, foreign clubs' names, but yeah, this is definitely a decent signing for the Whitecaps. You know, D mid is definitely one position that they they might need need some help. And there is also a report that this could be a high tamp deal and close to a DP contract. I mean, if this is a DP contract, that's a little bit bit of a, a stretch. I mean, I'm pretty sure the Whitecaps really want to hope that this is just going to be a high tam contract because like i said you know anytime when you want to use a, a a designated player spot ideally you don't want to use it on the defensive end or even in the defensive mid position and and right now i'm pretty sure the white caps are just going to be happy if they do have that one dp spot open i mean i think they do have one more dt dp slot open because they have lucas cavallini as one of the dp and then uh ryan goal as the second dp so they they're still looking for 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 that that third DP, unless if I'm not mistaken, some there's a there's a player in the Whitecaps that I might have have forgot that they're actually on a designated player contract. But we'll see when this deal is going to be be official. Because like I said, this is an advanced talk, and it seems like in a matter of days this is going to be official. Now moving on in terms of now moving away from talk about transfer rumors and unfortunately injuries. Is that Leonjo Campana has won the the player of the week, unsurprisingly, because you know, anytime when you score a hat trick like what Leo Campana did with Inter Miami, he you you're going to get the, the player of the week week kind of honor. And yeah, congratulations to Leo Campana of winning the player of the week. And now it kinda also so gets a very interesting discussion of, you know, is he going to, to now get get the start in that number nine position over he he Guayan? I mean uh, from what I heard, it seems like Higuain is going to be back into this team, but you kind of sense that with Inter Miami, especially in the last game, they definitely look more cohesive when they 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 are are going for on the attack when Higuain is not there. And I think there was even one part part of the game where when Campana did did score the first goal, they immediately cut the camera to Higuain, and you can see Higuain was not happy. Like he, he knew what's going to happen. He knew he was about to to replace and that's also kind of just tells you you the the story of this team of the fact that is he going being being kind of just just a very selfish teammate and that is the team being being kind of doing a overthinking or maybe even doing too much to just please please he going because we've seen before where when you have a a, a well-known player in your team and a player that has a lot of e eagles and certainly wants the ball as what we've seen with he going with with, with Inter Miami, it can definitely leave, leave creates problems for the team. So yeah, this is going to be an interesting thing to see how it's going to go, and especially I'm pretty sure uh, the relationship between Phil Neville and Gonzalo Higuain is not good at all after what Neville just did did to him a couple of weeks ago, throwing him under the bus. I won't be surprised. We might see Gonzalo Higuain get get bench, and that yeah, you know. I mean, it, it's kind of, I would say, I want to say it's a good problem to have, but, you know, with Inter Miami, there always it seems to have, have some problem and that let's just hope that that's something that they'll, they'll eventually figure out because at the end of the day, I think for Inter Miami, they, and especially, hopefully with Phil, Phil Neffel, 
he he will he maybe will just do the, the the right thing and just play the 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 team that he has and not actually let a guy that that re- really wants to get into the 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 team and and, and basically kind of ru- ruins the the attack because he wants the ball so much and at the end of the day you know if Inter Miami does move on from Gonzalo Higuain I'm pretty sure nobody's gonna be be that upset because because of that now uh speaking of of kind kind of coaching coaching kind of saga and stuff like that uh so the latest Almeida saga saga now sees him skipping both last game press conference and the midweek press conference that happened today and you know honestly it, it's it started to to become you know as a fan fan of of the quakes i'm starting to kind of kind of i mean i don't know if laughing laughing it or kind of chuckle at at this guy is the right word to use but it's kind of almost feel feel like it's kind of entertaining to to see how how this saga just kind of drag on weeks and week and how there's just some new new things that just makes makes this this saga even more more spicy but I mean, at the same time, you know, I don't want to just kind of joke about because at the end of the day, this is one of the teams that I, I have root for and it is my local team. And that it also just explains another example of why this Quakes, Quakes uh, ownership is completely inept. Like, if this is not the most inept kind of organization in MLS, I mean, there are probably, probably some Inter Miami fans might make a case, but you have not known how, how inept this organization ha- has been and that. Again, this is this just it's it's kind of frustrating because of of the way that I've mentioned many times over the time with the saga. The only reason why Almeida has not not been fi- fired by by the the front office is because the front office and the ownership are are too cheap to try to to pay him. Even though Almeida has done so much stuff that if he was on any other team, he would have been fired a couple uh, of weeks ago. So. Yeah, this is why why this saga has just kind of continued to be spicier and spicier, and that you know again it, it's it, it's sad to see that that of course it is the case, but at the same time it's ca- kind of also funny of, of you know what is Almeida gonna do ne- next to really the the piss off the the front office and the ownership, and yet still at the end of the day he's not gonna be fired because of of the fact that the ownership refused to to exercise his his buyout contract if they do fire him. Now, moving on from the last news of this news of the week is that there is reports suggest that Apple TV Plus remains high interest in the the next TV deal that MLS is going to have alongside with ESPN and Univision. And, you know, the TV deal has been a very hot topic for the past couple of weeks around MLS. And, you know, there's been been, been talks of how disappointing the, the new TV deal is going to be and nothing like what, what we originally thought that it was going to be the case but you know for this one i guess this is good news for mos because you know they get more money from apple and i'm assuming they're going to have games on apple tv plus and espn plus but it's going to be more frustrated for fans like myself that i'm going to have to subscribe to a, another streaming things device i mean i'm already trying not to to subscribe to too many i mean i, I think i've only subscribed to espn plus uh i haven't in subscribed to uh, Paramount or Peacock because again, you know, while those subscription costs doesn't cost a lot, I mean, most of them are only like five ninety nine per week. If you subscribe to like multiple of them, it adds adds up every sing- single month. So yeah, this is kind of frustrating if we're going to have a case where there's going to be the MLS game that's going to be happening at two two different source and before you ask me well why don't you just of course watch it in a knockoff stream which i have done before i have watched mls game in a knockoff stream before in fact uh when when apple tv uh forecast their first friday night baseball game i actually watch a knockoff stream of that and i gotta say they actually did a pretty good job in terms of the the quality the why why is in that game uh, the commentator was not so. I mean, the commentator was almost near the Twitter level of, of, of commentary in those Friday night baseball games. But, you know, one thing we know about MLS and especially those national televised games. And if Apple TV Plus is going to kind, kind of have some exclusive right to some of these national televised games, they need to improve the quality. I mean, some of the quality in, in some of these MLS games are just absolutely Hor- horrible and some that looks like something from from the early 2000s rather than than the the hd quality that that we we've seen in some of the other sport 
fucking events on TV uh, right now in present day. So, yeah, again, overall, it will definitely improve the, the viewing experience if it's going to be on Apple TV+. Plus. But it's also going to be frustrated because then now we're going to have to pay pay for an, another street, streaming device. And that we already have enough to, to pay for nowadays, aren't, aren't we? But either way, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure you guys see you like, smash the subscribe button. As always, let me know in the comments below what do you think of all these news. And if there's any news I didn't mention here on the board, let me know in the comments below. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next time.